It's the Exit 52 podcast live on a Sunday afternoon, April 7th. My name is Jake Luke. I'm joined by Eric. I'm joined by Spencer here for a little instant analysis of the Orioles latest series, one in which they dropped uh, two games out of three to the Pittsburgh Pirates. They win their first one on Friday, five to two. Uh, and then in consecutive days, they get walked off uh, by the Buccos three to two uh, on Saturday and five to four today in a bit of a stunner that probably uh, probably could have been a win for them, but that's sort of been the story of uh, it was the story of the series. I feel like it, it just feels like slow starts and then uh, some issues coming up with the uh, the relievers there uh, ultimately are, are what's putting them in some tough spots here and really guys throughout the course of the season I feel like they've been outside of the first two games there it feels like they've been scraping things together. And uh, all of a sudden, maybe one or two things don't break your way and you're not scraping them together and you lose your first series of the year. Spenny, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, it was a tough one. The Orioles continue to get annihilated by soft toss, soft tossing lefties. Happened twice this series where they just couldn't hit soft tossing lefties hard. They're failing to have productive at bats. And I tweeted it the other day. It just feels like in this gauntlet against so many lefties, they look like they're going to struggle. They don't look productive against lefties. Gunner today really struggled with high fastballs. Uh, chasing after those, was unable to speed the bat up and is really kind of golfing a little bit, which feels like against righties he's going to mash, but did end up hitting, I think, maybe 209 against lefties last year, so he's still looking to improve there. Uh, Dean Kramer, you know, has a, an awesome outing, but it's April, so baseball got sloppy at the end there. The bullpen was pretty gassed today in the rubber match, and – then Cano lets up a leadoff single, and then lo and behold, the Orioles are in bang-bang plays back-to-back, and Gunner kind of has a runner in his face and tries to make an unbelievable play, and I think Brandon Hyde was like, you know, only a few guys can get to that ball in the first place, stomp their foot on the bag, and then Gunner, you know, sails it, and the Orioles lose, which, you know, you hate to lose, but <laughs> you would have really also hated to go to extras in back-to-back games against the Pirates in April when your bullpen is still trying to calibrate a little bit, so... Uh, righty bats other than Ryan Mountcastle need to figure it the fuck out. I mean, Austin Hayes has been horrible so far. Cedric Mullins, uh, you know, a lefty, but hasn't been great. Uh, Westberg has been, I feel like making solid contact. The ball will drop for him. He's putting the ball in play. He's had hits, things like that. Santander has been a, you know, pretty solid on that side of the plate. Uh, Adley hasn't exactly smoked the ball, but you know, wasn't killer today. So their righty bats need to carry them a little bit more. And, uh, there's there's lots of conversations we can get into, but yeah, man, the the one takeaway that I really have nine nine games, ten days, I think, into the season, maybe eleven days because they did have a day off between opening day and the second. Eleven days in the season. What is going on against lefties in this lefty gauntlet to open the year is not working, and that's where the Orioles need to try and find some answers. And I know a lot of people want to point to prospects, but a lot of the prospects are left-handed. You look at maybe Mayo and Norby as two guys that are right-handed bats, but. Can you count on them to come up and be hot? I don't know. It's you know, uh, it's er too early to push the panic button, but something's got to give. And I don't know what it's what to say. I'm I'm not a swing mechanics guy, <laughs> so you know Austin Hayes, uh, you know Ramon Arias, and a lot of these righty bats and switch hitter bats need to figure it the fuck out against soft tossing lefties. It's going to be an issue until they do. Eric. And you talked about it a bunch. We've talked about it. And it's it's not just this year. It's not just last year. The soft tossing lefties have gotten the Orioles for like a decade now. Like it's just. Across just managers, amazing. across GMs, they just can't hit them. Yep. No, it doesn't like, doesn't matter who it is. It's whatever's, whenever the Orioles, again, in no matter, it doesn't matter who's in the uniform. When they play these soft tossing lefties, this is what happens. Um, and Brian talked about it last year, and he's like, if I'm an AL East team, like I'd sign a couple. You know, Rich Hill gave the Orioles hits for years with the Red Sox and, and some of those other guys. But Brian said it, like, sign those guys, and, and you'll stifle the Orioles. And that's what we saw this series. Um, again, Friday was a weird game and in the rain and the slow and the, in the, in the, the hail and the sleet and all that. Um, they, they got back on the winning track, but the last two days just, just couldn't really do anything. People today are like blaming the bullpen and hide and like, you can't, how can you put in Cano when Kimbrell's a closer? And then again, I tweeted it, but if they put in Kimbrell and Kimbrell does the same thing, then it's, why could you put, why would you pitch him? He's pitched him three days in a row. How could you do that? Cano is rested. So it's like your day, again, it's, this isn't on hide. It's not on the bullpen. Like, yes, Yanir Cano needs to throw strikes and not load the bases with no outs. But again, it, it 
Yanir Cano didn't go, you know, one for three today with runners in scoring position and 0 for 14 or whatever yesterday. Like, Cano, you know, Cano was not good today, but Cano didn't lose in the game. It's the offense. It is, it's, again, people, I mean, Cano got ground balls at the end yeah. of that game. That's, he that's also got him out of that massive jam where they had three on and it looked like, man, it looked like that was going to be it. And he, mm -hmm. he you know, kind of let his nuts hang there a little bit. Kaloum did the same thing. And, it, you yeah. know, it's just, it, you know, they, those guys had their moments for sure, but it, it does all go back to the fact that, you know, it, it feels like they get to the seventh inning and they're like, all right, and now now I guess we got to go hit. It's like the Vince Young thing on PMT, like, you know, chill out in the first half and try to go the fuck off. Well, they're not going the fuck off. You know, they're scoring three or four runs and they're scraping together a win. You know, that's great and all, but that's not going to that's not going to cut it against this current Yankees team. That's not going to cut it against even the way the Red Sox are playing, who you're going up to Boston to see. Like, they, they really have to start figuring out a way to get some guys, uh, you know, running through home plate, like before the seventh inning. It, it just comes down to that. It's that simple. It's very oversimplified, but, you know, that's just kind of where we're at. The and, and here I'm gonna we're gonna do a little Mike Francesa here, but I'm gonna take away Matt Ryan Mountcastle from this. He's hitting 294 with an 879 OPS. He smoked the ball today. He had three hits. He again, he's the guy who you would expect. A you he, know, he's seeing a beach ball right now. Yes, and again, a, a soft tossing lefty is someone who Ryan Mountcastle should do damage against, and he did. Here are the other numbers again: lefty, righty, ambidextrous. I don't care. Throwing underhand, it doesn't matter. Here are the numbers: Gunnar Henderson, 206. Adley, 303. Adley and, and, and Mounty are really the only guys sitting. Like you said, Jake, Adley hasn't had the power swing yet, and he's he's going down to his knee a lot. I don't think he did it today, but yesterday, it's it, every pitch, every swing was like Adrian Beltre, where he's ending up on the knee. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, Santander, 216. Westberg, buck 94. Austin Hayes, 077. Mullins, 143. James McCann, another guy who you would expect to hit uh, soft-tossing lefties, 286. He was over three today, but 286. And then Jorge Mateo, 308. Again, limited at bats for him, but the these numbers cannot, again, these are not, the, you can't, you're not going to win with this. And, and, and again, it just comes down to the fact that these top of the top of the order guys, they're they're way better than that. Like Santander, like you're not getting much. Adley, you're getting a little bit, but it could be better. Gunner, you're getting nothing out of relative to what you expect. And like if you're if those guys aren't hitting, then all the people complaining about Arias and Hayes and uh, you know, McCann and Mateo at the bottom of the order. They're going to be validated because, like you know, and that's maybe that does speak to uh, speak to some of their complaints. Like if you're relying this much on the top of the order guys, which naturally you're going to more than you would not, you know, maybe maybe a change could be in the offing here. But I, I don't expect it anytime soon, and I expect the complaints to continue and maybe be somewhat valid. Yeah, again, people being like, you know, Michael Elias, he's doing this on purpose. He loves this. Like, shut the fuck up. It's not that that drives me more crazy than anything. Like, Tony Kemp is not going to be on this team for much longer. Jackson Holiday will be up. And like Jake said, Jackson Holiday's a lefty. Would Jackson Holiday have helped today? Maybe. Probably not, though. We don't we don't know. Again, the guys like Mayo and Norman. might have conflicted with his uh, third period English class, so he might not have even been able to play. It, it's just the notion that it's just that right. easy, right? Just this yeah, one yeah. rookie player is going to make you nine and zero oh instead yep. of five and four. Yeah, it's that easy. Yeah, which again, but that that's everyone thinks you just plug them right in. Mayo's going to go for three for four. Jackson's going to do this. Blah blah blah. That that's not it. And again, guess what? No matter how much you bitch and complain about who's on this team and who's not none of that is going to change any of their thinking. Like Brandon Hyde, Michael Elias do not give a rat's ass about what Ravens fan 48 98 is, is saying right now on Twitter. Cause he Eric, just Eric, you know, that. just lumping all, just all these complainers. They're all just Ravens fans. Everyone, so they're just I see, Ravens fans, right? Everyone I see is like Ravens, blah, 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 this and that. And again, that's, this is where we need to get this out of the head, uh, out of our head. One game in, in the MLB is not a life or death situation. Yes, it sucks. Guess what? They've lost, what, four games so far? They're probably yep. going to lose 60 more times this year. Maybe, you know, probably more. It's crazy how that's going to happen. Like, we people are, like, legit. Again, I, I have people in my DMs having, like, aneurysms. Cano fucks up every game he comes in. I replied back. I said, you're dumb. That's yeah, not true. I think this is the first run he's let up this season, and it was on two back to back infield ground balls. Like it's yeah, concerning it's with like the fact that this was supposed to be the easy stretch. I will give those people that. that. But like, I mean, yeah. listen, you're one gunner play away and one rowdy tellers. Get your fat fucking ass out of the way again and allow him to actually throw through his lane, and you probably win. They should have just pegged him in his gut. Yeah, and like he, you know, we didn't talk about him sliding into Westberg, a hard slide where he, you know, led with his, uh, you know, he leaned to the left, he led his legs out to the left, and you know, tripped Westberg essentially and stopped his throw to first. That guy can absolutely just, you know, go do some origami somewhere. I, yeah, I, I am no fan of his after this series. 
Here's what I'll say. But, and again, they they didn't lose to, to the Oakland A's. They didn't drop two out of three by kicking the ball around to the Oakland A's. The Pirates are the Pirates are a good team. They're, what are they, 7-2 and two right now, tied for the yeah, best? Yeah, they're, 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 they're probably as similar to what the Orioles were like the last couple of years. Like They yeah. don't have the expectations, and they have a lot of talent. And, like, I mean, they started places. white hot last year. Yeah, and they're, they're young, and they're spunky. And again, they have O'Neill Cruz, O'Neill Cruz, who I love. I think he is fancy. He's so much fun to watch. But it's 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 there. They're going to play better. This is not life or death right now. It sucks that, like you said, Jake, they're 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 kind of pissing down their leg in what was supposed to be an easy part of the the schedule right now. But guess what? They're going to get better. They're not going to play like this forever. They like, are. They, they are. They're they're way better than this. Like they, yeah. they, they these these top four guys in the in the batting order. They're way better than this. They're going to find their bat. They're going to find their swing, and it's going to get better. And especially like I would also say. Um, I think we got a comment in here like the weather has just been so fucking weird. And I, I don't I don't want to be that guy because guess what? It's crazy weather for both teams. But like, yeah, they play in it, too. Yeah, it's just been a we- weird start to the year. The vibe there's been a vibe shift. The vibes are off. I'm just going to say it that way. Right. And it's time to just go up to Boston, see what happens there and get back down to Camden Yards and see if you can settle in for the year. Yeah. And uh, again, I like it's it's way it's obviously way too early to freak out. It's not this isn't like like I'm seeing people being like, oh, I knew this would happen. Why do I get excited? It's like then then don't watch. Then just stop. If you're going to if you're like this over the team on April 7th, then I don't want to see you bitching and complaining that you got or, you know, that you can't get playoff tickets in, in six months because that's exactly what's going to happen. But again, they're not going to play this bad forever. Baseball, as we all know, it's up and down. It's a roller coaster. It's it, you know, water finds its level. This team is very good. Like, like, just like the Yankees are not going to be playing this good for the entire year. Just like Boston is not going to be playing this good for the entire year. They will put it together. What, what, what I'm encouraged by is, is, and we haven't really talked about him today. Like Dean Kramer is awesome today. He had the throwing error, but he was really good. The pitching for the most part has been very, very good. Cole Grayson Irvin was, had- Grayson was electric. Yeah. Yeah. In the series, they get that win. He, what did he strike out five out of six batters? Let's up a solo home run, comes back and throws absolute filth. Yeah, Tyler so Wells, total, I think, yeah, able so to bounce back in back to back starts. Mm-hmm. And then Dean Kramer was unbelievable. It was unbelievable today, really. And very, and very good. weird defensive situations. The O'Neill crew, the unbelievable relay throw in. You mm-hmm. know, he throws away kind of. Mateo maybe could have gotten that ball, but maybe not on the, the double play ball, throws that away, leads to a run. Dean Kramer was awesome. So, Considering you're down one and a half, I, I still don't count John Means. I mean, I don't know. He's been out for so long, but you're down one and a half guys. The rotation's been really, really, really solid. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, obviously the relievers, there's a lot to complain about. Mike Bauman is a warm body. He's lost at sea in high leverage situations. I mean, in any situation, I mean, the guy's just a freaking reliever inning eater. You get him in there to just get you out of a game, whether you're up big or down big, whatever. He should not be in a situation like that. And people can, you know, call for the high decision. <laughs> You know, it, it certainly is is what it is, and I think it was colored interestingly when he gets taken out for Kalum, who just completely saves the day for him. Um, but overall, yeah, it just you, you never want to see Mike Bauman in a situation like this. Hmm. Some of the other stuff where you it know, wasn't even it wasn't even an earned run he let up. I mean, it was a ghost runner in the extra innings that he does. Well, let yeah, up. a couple a couple loud you know loud at bats there. Either way, it was just, it's just an unpleasant watch. What was he throwing like the sinker or the changeup every single? I think a slider. Yeah, I think he uh, a slider. slider. Yeah, it's like bruh. Let's let's maybe just like try to throw some gas. Go right at the guy, and if he gets here, he gets here. I don't know. It was just it was a, it's a, it's a rough watch with him out there overall. And it's just, it was, it's but when you look at that game, I mean, Dylan Tate. Electric Keegan Aiken, Jacob Webb, Craig Kimber all come in and, and get the job done. And uh, Heasley, that, that kid Heasley too. Um, he he had a tough day yesterday, I think, but uh, the day before, I think he had a, a pretty pretty immaculate inning there. Not not in immaculate inning, but a pretty sick inning. So yeah, so bullpen. Um, I mean, what did they, I think they let up earned run wise one? Cano was the only one of the series I think that let up an earned run. I think AKA so. not in extras. I'm trying to remember on fr- Friday again. Seems so long ago. I don't know, but yeah, again, the bullpen. The bullpen was pretty good. Again, I take take away whatever you want to say about Bauman, Jake. You K- talked Kulom, about it. Kano, and Krimble, Kimbrel went uh, two and two thirds on and Friday, Friday and did not allow a run. Aiken Aiken has been awesome this year. Again, we like to give him a lot of shit. He's been awesome. Again, outside of you know a very few guys, the bullpen has been fine. It, it does look like again. I I think we do need another arm or two, but. The, the, we'll cross that bridge eventually. Moves are going to be made. That's another thing. People are just freaking out. Moves are going to be made. I got I got two more things that I'm going to forget if I don't say them right now. The look on Gunner's face after he walked off the field, that's that's trouble for the rest of the league. If you, again, I I'm hoping that cuz Spenny likes to talk about it and he's said it he said it more times than anyone. 
he's going to murder someone on the field one day. This <laughs> may be like this is the straw that I think may break the camera. This is the he the Joker might. origin story. This is yeah. like Christian. Yeah. This is like uh, Patrick Bateman snapping. And mm -hmm. he down might down. Uh, he might just spontaneously combust. Like you know when he when he like slides through like he has like a hard slide through home and he's like banging on like the the yep. ground. You know that kind of thing. Him striking out three times against lefties on elevated fastballs and then throwing the game away. It might, there there might this be like a. I, things I probably can't say on YouTube. I was going to go. This real is, uh, there. there might be some uh, weird things going on in the Henderson household when he gets home. And he did Homer on Friday, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he, I mean, he, he couldn't touch. He couldn't touch high heaters day. It happens. He, you know, the runners in his way he tries to make a play. And again, I'm kind. I'm not happy that they lose, but you kind of are happy that they didn't go to extras. Mm -hmm. That like, oh, he didn't. You know, a runner doesn't score. You make a play. Whatever. Something happens. Whatever. Yeah. A run. That was a long ass game yesterday. Again, get out of it. Go to extras. Who the hell's gonna pitch? Coulomb again. Like, who the fuck is gonna pitch in that situation? So, yeah. that was a I long, think they said Coulomb or Irvin. I think they said Irvin was available to pitch. Um, and then they would have figured out what to do. They do have a day off tomorrow, but still yeah. you're chewing guys up in extra inning games back to back. It's, it's not fun. Yeah. I, th but again, I think this, this may give Gunner like the, Hey, uh, kind of a wake up call smack in the face. Like, Hey, listen, you, you had an awful game. This you know, kind of guy needs to smack himself around a little bit. Yeah. They, and, might, need a, cool. they might need a team meeting RDT. No, no, no. We're not doing team meetings. No? Yet. And then I, and then this, this is what I, I will say too. And I, I will give, I didn't come up with this on my own. Um, let's tweet it. Uh, ba -ba -ba, come on, come on. At Tyler Barbaris underscore. I don't know. Um, he tweeted, reminder, the Orioles started five and four last season as well. They also dropped their first road series last year as well, too. So again, it, it's it's not the end of the world. Like this is not, and someone else pointed out if you if you win five out of your out of every nine games, that's 90 wins on the season. Like there, I mean, again, it the expectation things that's what make that's what making that's what's making everyone because and we thought this was we'll start nine and one and we'll be going into boston and we'll be this and that and everything's going to be peaches and roses and rainbows and flowers and everything but that's it's not how they that's not how they've played so they have to get better i think they know that um or again these are not losses that they're taking lightly they're not like ah damn we'll go tomorrow I, I think this will piss them off as it should um again easily winnable games that 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 they could have had in their back pocket and it just didn't happen so the guys have to hit the pitching. I think it's fine. Um, and again, I, I think we're going to get a real fuck you start from Corbin Burns. I think great Grayson is going to shove too. And then in Fenway, know, yeah, it's going to be warm there. I think too. And the Orioles, it's in that their season, opening day. If I'm not mistaken, no. I think it's supposed to be Bello, Pavetta, and Crawford, who are three righties, so they can get out of the soft tossing less yep. lefty for yep. vacuum that they've been in as well. How about that Trevor yeah. Story contract? That sucks, man. That Andrew. That when I saw that on on Friday, that sucks. Because you could see the second he landed on it, that yeah. that's that's horrible. But yeah, again, this is. I mean, it's a perfect opportunity. Again, you go up to Boston for their home opener, their opening day, and blah blah blah. You go, which again, it's the Orioles' third. Opening it's Boston's day. home opener. That's a yeah, long started, ass time to win. They started with three straight road series on the West Coast, which would drive me nuts. That's they're crazy. playing well too. That's uh good for yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. So again, hopefully you come home, you can smack them around a little bit, then you come home. Um, I think we're going to get D.L. Hall sometime this weekend. So, yeah, it's it, it, would, it would be nice to, again, win this series. Obviously, you want to win them all. You're not going to. But this is this is a series that you would uh, you would really like to go up there and win and then come on home and kind of just start taking off from there. So I don't know what else to say. I mean, the, the guys have to start. They have to start hitting. You have to. You're not going to win games scoring two runs in these games, you know. So we got this. So how does this offense get better? How do we stop Hayes from grounding out so much? I don't know about Hayes necessarily, but like this offense gets better by having their all-star caliber top four in the batting order start playing like it. Yep. It's literally it. And it's like it's, getting it's guys crazy. on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, again, I'm yeah. maybe Gunnar Henderson's biggest fan on earth, but if your leadoff hitter is going over four or three strikeouts, can't advance runners, you know, effectively. I think yesterday did advance a runner actually in a, late in the game, but, um, you know, not – putting a threat on. And I know Hyde said after the game, guys are getting out early. A lot of those yep. guys are getting out super early in the top of the order and, and middle way through. So, and uh, Hayes, I mean, Mullins is who he is. He's better than he's been playing for sure. Hayes and Mateo both had Linsanity runs like 
of their own last season. So like if the, either of those guys heats up, that can help with the small ball a little bit and that'll be good. But yeah, it's just kind of, it's all like, it's a Hayes, little I mean, and, and I am a huge proponent of Hayes, but like we're about to see the Orioles play three straight righties. Cowser's probably going to play a lot. Hayes probably needs a little reset. I mean, probably needs to, to sit a little bit, go work on some things, come back after it. So I would expect Cowser to play probably two, start probably two of those games against righties. So that's why everyone's so mad. Oh, Cowser's not playing. They don't want to play him against lefties. They aren't going to get lefties. I don't think against the Red mostly, Sox. Mostly, mostly productive when he did. Mostly productive when he has gotten time this season. So I am excited against to see, righties for sure. Yeah, yeah, more consistent playing time. And yeah, I mean, I get the lefty righty split stuff, but eventually it's like let's let's put the math equations away for a minute and just like play these young guys and see what you get. Not even referring to the Norfolk guys. Yeah, Hayes again. Hayes. He's putting together a lot of Chris Davis at bats. I, I I like the guy too, but again, it's I mean, what he had the one tapper and timings of off the yeah timings off. He it feels like he can't feel breaking balls incoming and hitters counts. It's felt like as well. He's had a couple uh, like early two zero kind of situations. I mean, today was just a boiling point. I think his third time through the order, it runs up to three zero. There's like a fifty fifty fastball that was. You know, it could get Walker. called either way. But I, yeah. I'm an Orioles fan, so I say it's a ball. If I was a freaking Pirates fan, I'm like, oh, that's a strike, whatever. And then ends up being, a, uh, I think, a double play ball up the middle, like four pitches later. So just when it's bad, it's bad, and it's bad right now. So little little pine time, little cows are there. Go adjust the swing. I mean, I feel like I've been looking at the launch angles. It looks like pretty much everything is like no more than five degrees off the bat. He has been putting the ball yeah. into the dirt. Time and time again, he was able to, you know, I think I was driving a run yesterday on a fielder's choice, at least, which, you know, you still want to see a hit, but at least something somewhat productive. I think there's one account on Twitter that's like Hayes to ground, uh, Hayes to basically record an out, not a strikeout, not a hit. They just keep betting on that over and over again and keep getting money. So there's a fun little bet. Yeah, the TMT guys betting against the A's. Exactly. So, I mean, we don't, again, we're not swing mechanics guys, but. <laughs> I think we should, I some, I think we, should uh, we should start a video series where we uh, we give you a bat and we like try to have you figure it out. I'll figure it out. Breaks I'll figure stuff. out how to talk about it. Probably not hit a ball. I'll figure it out. We could probably get, get Trevor Bauer to pick you. Do a video series of that. Should I get a full Orioles uniform? Actually, yes. And you're gonna have to wear the high socks too. I'm not letting you do long pants. You gotta hike them all the way up. I appreciate you that. Nice, nice chain. Somebody's got to keep me honest around here. Uh, let's do, let's do three dogs of the series. Yeah. Who's going first? Eric, I want you to go first. Who's your dog of the series? Um, I, I, I shafted him last series, so I'll, I'll give it to Mountcastle. You know, I, Mountcastle was awesome today. Um, I think he had, did he have a hit three for four. Today? Yeah. Three out of four today. He's up to um, five doubles and a ding dong. Yeah, he uh, uh, he he legged out a triple well. on an awkward play. It was a double, but you know, let, got the third base, took the extra ninety. Looks fast. He's always yeah. been secretly fast. He's a very athletic guy, and again, it's it's especially build this the whole, yeah. build the whole plane out of shortstops. If you draft shortstops, who is it? I think the the Padres, they're the guy. They I think everybody except for one guy in their starting or in their starting lineup was came up as a shortstop. Like if you again these shortstops. Obviously, they are freak athletes. Um, he went one for five on Friday. I don't know, I forget what he did yesterday, but had yeah, I, I, struck out twice and then goes three for four today, drives in a run. Yeah, I I I think Mount Castle's playing well again. He seems like he's hitting the ball hard, and it's not even that, it's it's the defense too. The defense we saw it at the tail end of the Royal Series. He's just he seems like he is he, he can see everything right now. He's 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 very loose, he's he's playing awesome. He he's been able to pick some crazy balls so far, and mm -hmm. he obviously is so tall, and and he's a thin guy, kind of that can that can get down and bend and do the, hit the splits and stuff. He's been picking for yeah. sure over there. Yeah, and the, I mean the play on Friday in the in the hail where he like went down and got it and kind of like smothered it and then tossed it to Grayson, and his face he's like shaking his head like that's he's hilarious. Guy. He has funny facial expressions. He's a funny dude. He's he's, great. he's, a, he's a Florida man through and through. Yeah, he is a Florida man. He's definitely a Florida. His dad, you know, they, his, his father in law, they just drive golf carts around down there. Oh, they he was in the GTA Six trailer. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah. Again, I, I'll I'll give it to Mountie. I, I think he's 
He, I'll say he has a bomb this series too, off a of righty over the monster. He's monster he's is his. Bad. Oh my god, he's probably so happy to go there. He's you know probably, who likes the monster is Ramon Urias. Very good call. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna look up the splits, Jake, while you do your dog of the series. Uh, I'm gonna go Grayson. I mean, you yeah. know, he just he he was the only winning pitcher. Pitched a gem. I'm um, looking at his stats right now. Six hits, six point one innings pitched, two earned runs. Two walks, seven strikeouts. I mean, that's that's a gem of a start and a second good one uh, on the year. So he's off to a banner start, and him and Corbin Burns are going to be having that kind of Top Gun dogfight thing going on where they're trying to outdo each other. And I think that's an awesome relationship and very exciting stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Grayson. Special shout-out to Craig Kimbrell, too, getting there, getting the save. A yeah. couple loud outs there, but, you know, it was, it, was all, it was all right. He did what he was paid to do, and that was nice to see. Love it. I'm going to go with Danny Coulomb. He has been a dog yesterday coming in after Bauman was shaky, obviously. And I want to give a, a special side dog to Dylan Tate, who has looked so sharp. Those two I'm really excited about. But Coulomb, with his FU breaking balls that just start well over the plate and that sweeper and that curve, I mean, good Lord, the, the Orioles pitching lab has certainly done it, picking him up, and he fits right in. Comes in, able to be a, a, a wild, wild, wild lefty matchup there. So, Absolutely love Danny Coulomb and what he's done. And that little hop he had yesterday after he I got the right down. Oh, yeah. He you loved to see the energy. And I mean, we left Dean Kramer off of there. We're not going to be perfect every time, but um, yeah, I, I love those guys. Jake, great call by you. I forgot Ramon Urias's slash line against the Boston Red Sox in general. This isn't even in Boston. He hits 345 with a 521 slugging, 935 OPS, and a OPS plus of 158. He I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but he pissed on one like over the wall like one last of the year. longest yeah it was last year yeah, yeah it might have been one of the longest i've seen and i was watching the red sox broadcast and i remember they were like talking they were like man is this this guy is like one of the best players on the team and I was he's like, like the king of being able to drive a ball 370 feet to left and that just plays over the monster yeah yeah he's uh i i'd be ex i'd be interested to see if he can get it going against him a little bit here because it's been it's been bad but yeah he's he is very comfortable against the red sox so 411 batting average on balls in play, just pissing on the ball against the Red Sox. Red Sox killer. Yeah. Uh Eric, catch up, catch up of the series from you. Um, the or the outfield defense. Um, that just sprinkled it through everyone. Hayes had a nice catch, I think, the other day. He dropped one that was like a weird one in the sun or whatever, but uh, Mullins had two cat three catches, was it like full extension? Yesterday and extra uh, inning. Uh, how about uh, yeah. Tony Cater's climbing the ladder on that short one to right field? I mean, he really needed to get up for that one. That was uh, – There's that. Was that. He, he had the nice one laying out in extras. Yes. It's funny. Like, one yesterday and extras, no one even talks about because, like, 13 seconds later is when they walked it off. Yeah. But that play by him was incredible yesterday. And, I mean, that yeah. saved the game. That was a game ender if, yeah, if he didn't make that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but again, I, I mean, all of them play, play incredible defense. And that's why you – have to keep and nothing against Colton. I mean, he, he seems like a great athlete and, 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 you know, he's going to get his time in the outfield, but the plays that Hayes and, and Mullins make, that's why you keep them in there. That, you know, obviously not, there the, is not and the, the Mullins thing. I, I want to sidebar. There is no one in the organization that can play center field, like anything no. close to Cedric Mullins other no. than Enrique Bradfield. Bradfield maybe. Maybe. I was yeah, going to say Bradfield. there, there there's one he's guy in low a right yeah. now. He's in, he's in Aberdeen. So I don't know who people think is going to go play center. It's not that the, it's Mullins. Like Mullins mm -hmm. is playing center. Kowser will be out there a game or two. Hayes will be out there a game. Or two. It's Cedric Mullins. He is a difference maker. And we saw that today. Obviously, Tony, t Tony's blooper reel in right field, the, the short hop, and then thinking that ball was a home run. And it's just like ding donging oh. around it was hysterical. The, it's, I, I don't know about you guys. I wanted to murder these camera guys and, and from Masson. Yesterday, there was a ball that Adley hit, and I stood up being like, oh, that ball is hitting the scoreboard. And it lands 40 rows foul sure. down, the, down the third baseline. It's like, what, what is going on with these camera guys? Same thing with that O'Neill Cruz play. Yeah. Like, oh, the ball's in the river. And then they show it like they pan over, and Tony's like veering away from the wall, and it's like, who? What the hell is going on? So – that was ah uh, yeah that that my my two thumbs down goes to the mass and camera guys I'm sorry whoever it was but be because you're giving me a heart attack. Was, I'm gonna I'm gonna go relish of the week I'm gonna go with Jordan Westberg I, I think that one speaks for or of the series Jordan Westberg uh, relish he's he's there he's not there Jake who's your mustard of the series Oh my mustard that's a good question Hmm I'm gonna get, 
I'm look, I'm looking up and down the lineup here. This this is kind of a nothing series, you know. I think my mustard is going to have to go as I continue to uh, continue to filibuster. <laughs> yeah, filibuster here. I yeah, trying to find the word for filibuster. I actually filibustered. What do you think about that? Uh, I think my mustard. I'll go with Ryan O'Hearn. A couple clutch hits, you know. Why not? So why not? Why not give O'Hearn a shout out? It's always nice to get him in there. Him or James McCann. Who made the uh, the clutch play there as well on, uh, on Friday? I was I was told today that that we should trade um, O'Hearn and and Westberg for bullpen arms. So. I saw that. Yeah, that's listen. I don't know what the Ryan O'Hearn hate is about. There's been like a it's lot. Weird. It feels like it's weird. Do yeah. you agree with that, Eric? That's just in the yeah. general Twitter sphere. I don't. I think any of the I think any of these like relatively expendable vets that are kind of just like, you know, they're not necessarily like a progress stopper, but they're not like looked at as like a young up and coming guy. All of them are on the block right now for uh, Orioles Twitter that are trying to that are trying to get these young guys up here. They're not nobody's safe. And I get no. it. But O'Hearn is O'Hearn's a clutch player. He had a couple nice hits this series. Unbelievable pinch hitter, great lefty power bat, plays in Cam like Camden Yards and you know, him and Mount Castle splits wise are an unbelievable first base production wise yeah like, exactly doesn't get you you have to be like a freaking albert pujos in his prime level player to get like be like oh that's a tier above like they're they'll combine for 30 something home runs and 100 and something rbis yeah and he's like yeah. he's kind of an instant offense guy too that home run kind of came out of nowhere on friday and was like all right there's yeah. another one like, let's let's and it got to, it can be dead cold whatever he'll just all of a sudden rip one he gives he gives you chris davis vibes just that big brawny mm. lefty that can just mm. whack Right. He got them started because again, I mean, that first inning, Jones mowed down Gunner, mowed down Adley, and then um, I, Santa Jared Jones was unbelievable. Santa his, his, his extension on his fastball and the the heat he can—he's a freaking flamethrower. That guy was fun to watch. Well, and yeah. that was the thing on Friday. You're going, oh shit, he's blowing those guys away. Here, we, you know, it's going to be one of these games. And then O'Hearn's like, watch this, boom, got it. But um, yep. here we go, fun Andy Koska. After scoring a combined 24 runs in the first two games of the year, the Orioles have scored 23 combined in their next seven games. So that kind of sums it up. They, they, and they blew their load, and they're in a refractory period right now. Is Valleys that? and peaks. But, yeah, I mean, five and four, like you said, Eric, that's what they were last year. It's April. It's cold. This is not even I, – I was like, I don't know. I was being kind of a cynic about the snow and a lot of people are having fun with it. I was like, this is not baseball. This, this, is not I mean, this weather, regardless of whether it's baseball or not, this weather has sucked shit in the mid, the mid Atlantic and the Northeast. I'm just to live in it outside of anything sports related has been a complete yeah. misery. Today was like the first relatively nice day. I went for a walk. It was a little windy, but I could, I could deal with it. And uh, I don't know. I just need more of this and less of the, the bullshit that we've been getting with the gray, the gray skies and the rain and the 50 degrees. And I've been sick and I'm not happy. That's why you know we, what? I'm going to do it right here. I've got my Orioles beach hat sitting here i'm gonna put that on i got found this little bad boy it's got a little oriole bird in the beach chair it's, oh that's got i know that's got some secrets water all over it oh it's it's going to this is this is fresh the brim kind of sits up i hate that I need to mess with that but oh, yeah, yeah it's it, we're done with winter it's supposed to be 70 i think we're done i'm i'm declaring winter done it was really nice today i'll give mother nature her flowers for that literally um but it, it, we just need some more consistency at the plate here from her because this you know it's i'm done consistency from mother nature will yield consistency for the baltimore orioles lineup okay i'm into it one lat one last point um i think as orioles fans we have to stop looking at like and i did it we all do it we looked at this schedule in april and we we're like oh pff, cakewalk that's easy i did it like two days ago i was like this is an easy schedule just like we did um uh, and it's between that and rooting for opponents that we want to see in like the playoffs. Cause we did it in 2014. We did it last year. We're like, oh yeah. Bring on, bring on the Rangers. That's fine. So we're, I'm done. I'm done projecting about schedules and opponents and all of that stuff. And I'm just, we just have to leave it to the boys on the, on the, uh, on the diamond. Um, and, and all the games again, the good thing is, they haven't been blown out. Every they're in every game. They're, they, these games they walked very off cool. on the Royals twice and got walked off on by the Pirates twice. I mean, that's probably why people are so mm -hmm. emotional. Eric, have you uh, have you ever wondered what it's like to be a Ravens fan? No, not really. Well, now that, well, now you know. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's it's also it's just so easy at the beginning of the year to hit the panic button like people are doing. Like oh, like if this happened in July. 
this this like nine game stretch, people wouldn't be like it probably will happen. This. It will probably happen one or two more times, if that, like if not more than that throughout the year. And oh, like yeah. hopefully it's not a smaller sample size. You know, we're getting close to that uh that L10 that we're gonna look back on. And yep. you know, that's the pace you want to judge them at. But uh, you know, probably, you know, it's not gonna be a perfect year, but I'm sure they'll find their footing and they'll have some good streaks in them as well. So agreed. To have to get, I mean, have to figure something out against lefties. I don't know what it's gonna be, but I think it maybe it's being more patient. Like Hyde said, it's taking more pitches, being a little more selective, and putting more balls in play. Like the 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 pop ups and the weak ground balls, just take take pitches instead. Stop stop poking balls against lefties. They just well, half sw- they're like using a pit, a pitching wedge from eighty mm-hmm. yards out. Trying to yeah, they're 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 swinging everything in the dirt and at their knees, and they're just they're popping everything up, and they're just hey. it's it's rough. It's a rough I, watch. I do want to say congrats to what was that guy's name? Jack. Switowski, so Swinski, I think. For um, he actually, and don't don't. I, I mean, I didn't check this with the Elias Sports Bureau or anything, but he, I believe, he set the record for most uh, caught pop ups in a series with well, nine. He, he, he missed the one that uh, <laughs> that kid Falter, I th- or was that his name, Falter? Who almost he had the no hitter going, yeah. and uh, yeah, I don't know how that was not an error, but I, so I'm, I'm David, not kidding. I spent a solid seven minutes trying to track what team has the most pop-ups in the season so far because it has to be the Orioles. Yeah. Listen, they're a pop-up shop. You know, come get your free hats, $1. You know, maybe a little something fell off the back of the truck. I mean, in, in terms of being more patient, I mean, if you're not seeing the ball well, then that's what I feel like that's what leads to those half ass swings and those little dinky swings. So, unfortunately, you know, they're going to have to take their lumps. They're going to have to see more pitches and – get more experience. And I, I get why, like I do get why people are upset about prospects to a degree. Again, it's only been nine games. They're not just going to immediately start ripping guys up and down and mess with the development of prospects and all that stuff. They've also but, brought up some very high profile prospects that took like six weeks to get going. And yeah, they'll get going eventually, but like, it's not always the easiest transition. But I feel like I get why that is frustrating to watch to, for me to say like, Oh, Austin Hayes needs more at bats or Cedric Mullins needs more at bats to get the timing down. But it's like, Oh, well, I would rather see a prospect go through that same development. Like I do get that, but yeah. then that leads to guys getting sent down. So I, what is the answer? How can they make a change? Take more pitches, see more pitches, and see if you can time one up, get deeper into counts. I had the, uh, I threw it out in the group chat that they should just go through an entire game and not swing at anything and see if they can win. <laughs> Soft tossing lefties, make them, make them throw strikes, make them feel comfortable throwing some strikes to you, and then get a read and put a fucking swing on one. Like, they got some speed at the bags. You know, get the tail out there, get him on base, and see, you know, Gunner was, you know, Gunner stole two bases in a row uh, yesterday like, in a two. high leverage situation. Two stolen bases, one pitch thrown, no throws to the bases attempted. That's they didn't even look again, at that's, that's the psycho gunner. That, like, we need to come up like a with like Chad Doctor Mr. and Mister him uh, him Mr. sticking Hyde. his tongue out after the home run was probably the highlight of the series too. The like, yeah, what yeah. what is that that batter? I don't know. I was big on anything Grayson did on uh on him Friday, but... him come gunner after the game with his he always has his hands behind his back like he's in like you know like June like. 10th grade military ROTC training. And he's always like, Oh yeah, we did a really good job out there. And then he hits a home run and he's like, ah. it's, it's I'd love yeah. To hear, yeah. Like his voice was very subdued and he's got that kind of soupy growl to it. I'd love to hear like him mic'd up when he's like screaming like that, what that sounds like. Agreed. Yeah. That was, that was, that, that, that was um, the meme of the, the series that will live on. I don't think there's anything else I can think of, but Gunnar got, ah, was fully, fully entertaining there. I think I mean, we just have to hope. Grayson was also the like, recap of the series. How how can you not be fired up about Grayson, who did kind of yeah. fumble through the first time through the order a little bit, and then just started reaching back and low dotting dotting fastballs. The curveball had action on it. The change didn't even feel like it was there, but the fastballs he was able mm-hmm. to just really locate. He was down. It was cold, so he's down like the, the turtleneck. I mean, what a look, by the way, on him. Need Love more. It. Of that. I, I was going to say bit, he was like 95 and he was just painting a Bob Ross framing fastballs all over the plate. Happy little accidents. Throw fastballs in that weather when the batters are like, I it's snowing, it's hailing, what is going on? And you having in like a 98, 99 mile an hour fastball must be so much fun being like, oh, this is watch this. Like I'm not messing with any change up if it's if right. It's like that. Yeah. I'm got yeah. knees in there. And that's what you and I enjoyed that 47 for, straight uh, fastballs like you did last year. <laughs> Exactly. You and I enjoyed that for other uh, monetary reasons, but no. 
That's uh, that's for another. Any day. any other thoughts? Anything else, Eric? What what are, what are you thinking about the socks? What are you thinking about anything else? Spill it out, Eric. Eric's notes. Socks the- are again. Socks are a team that we we all dogged on in the off season. Their fans dogged on them. Um, we were like, this team is going to be dog water, and, and and you know we should dog walk everything is dog now. But every, we you know we should walk them. Um, we should we should absolutely mow through them every time we play them. So now it's time. This is the time. This is a series you have to win. I think if they win this series and right the ship, um, and not again, not like a three, three to two or four to a four to two, I, I give me like a good seven to one, you know, pumping in Boston, get their fans nice and down, get your your um, your emotions back up, get you know the vibes back up in the dugout, the clubhouse. Um, I also think it may be time rid of the uh, the handlebars. That's just me. I think the handlebars maybe have something to do with it, but. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think, I think the bats too, cold, too cold to be spraying water everywhere right now. You know, we, we need to wait for that to warm up a little bit before we break that out. That, 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 that I, I don't wrong, think they're man. doing that again. They, they change it every year. I think it's done. I think that's what people didn't realize. And the Orioles didn't realize about the, um, splash zone, whatever the hell it's called. Bird yeah, bath. Bird bath. Like the Orioles aren't doing that. They, they do pick a new one every year. Yeah. What if yeah, they do like I, a I Mad know. Max zone? Like the, that's going to be the the birdbath this year. Just people revving engines and like flying back and forth on spears and throwing grenades onto the diamond, things of that nature. I hope not, but no, I I, I think the bats come alive this series. Um, I don't know. I, I that's 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 what has to happen because again, the pitching. I'm not worried about the pitching. Um, the 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 Burns, Irving, um, um, Grayson. You know that should be a nice, a fun, uh, a fun series. So, I think they can easily get back in this again. They win two out of three or sweep them. I think everyone's like, for, even forgot Pittsburgh even happened. So, let's uh, let's go on. Let's win a series and then come home for uh, again. Hopefully, a good home stand with nice weather and packed crowds, and and we can have some fun at the ballpark. So, amen to that. Thank you all for listening uh, to this instant analysis recap of the series up in Pittsburgh. Not the result that we necessarily wanted, but got a good quality one in there. A good start out of Grayson Rodriguez and some other bright spots to highlight as we did. Uh, So if you enjoyed what you heard, feel free to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, Subscribe to us if you're listening to the podcast. Give us a nice five-star review on there or give us a like on YouTube. Uh, Throw a comment down below the video to help with our algorithm. Get those numbers pumping. You can find us on social media at Exit52Podcast across the board. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that good stuff. I am at Jake Luke. That's L-O-U-Q-U-E. Eric is at E-D-I-T-T-I-22. Spenny's at Ravens Four Dummies. That's the number four. And you can also follow Brian at Barstool Banks and Taylor at Taylor Smith Ten. Uh, until next time, guys. We will talk to you. See ya. Are we reduction?